Travel across America with me. Join me on a journey through history as we explore Beauvoir, the home of Jefferson Davis in Biloxi, Mississippi. Walk with me through the Jefferson Davis Presidential Museum, filled with Civil War artifacts and memorabilia. Learn about the estate. Visit the cemetery where veterans and their families rest and discover the story behind the death mask of President Jefferson Davis. Immerse yourself in the mid-19th century Southern history with time period dress tour guides and, and gain a new perspective on the Civil War. Experience the breathtaking view of the Gulf Coast from this historic site that has witnessed over a century and a half of change. Let's delve into the past and understand the complexities of American history at Jefferson Davis' home and museum in Biloxi, Mississippi. The Jefferson Davis Home and Museum is a fascinating world of information and history related to the mid-19th century. You won't believe some of the things that we found in the home and in the museum and at the cemetery. Jefferson Davis is one of the most historically significant individuals in American history, and a lot of people do not know much about this man, who was at one time the President of the Confederate States of America. This home offers a unique perspective into the past, and I want to point out that this home was never a plantation home. It was built and always maintained as a private residence and was never part of a plantation. And the Davis family was not the original occupants, nor owners. The time period dress tour guides help to immerse you in Southern culture and history. It's no secret that Jefferson Davis is a controversial character in American history, but we must look at some of these things with a balanced view. This is a historical homestead and worth visiting. We need to learn why things like the Civil War would make a brother turn against his own brother. These are things that we must research deeply and this video certainly cannot do any justice to that part of this incredible topic or this dark part of American history. I just want to point out some features of this beautiful home, some interesting artifacts and things that are held at the Presidential Museum and take you to this Confederate soldier burial ground. And did you know that Jefferson Davis was imprisoned? And do you know that he has two burial sites? As I mentioned, this museum is filled with lots of memorabilia, documents, and Civil War artifacts. Many uniforms and artillery are displayed there, and many personal possessions of Jefferson Davis. And look, this is Jefferson Davis's death mask. The making of death mask was common in this time frame and popular into the 1930s. One of the reasons that this practice ceased was because of the advent of photography. The museum, the cemetery, and the home are all within short walking distance. There is a charge for admission for the tours, and they were open seven days a week. 9 to 5. The Jefferson Davis Home and Presidential Library is located at 2244 Beach Boulevard in Biloxi, Mississippi. Have you subscribed? If not, why not? And if you haven't, can you please subscribe? Leave a comment below. One of the most interesting things that we saw at the cemetery, besides the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier of the Confederate States, were these binders filled with information about those that were interred there. It was very touching and interesting. Not only soldiers are buried there, but their wives, plus Samuel Davis, Jefferson Davis's father, is also buried there. One of the interesting things about the house is it wasn't really that large. We learned that the high ceilings helped with the heat by allowing the heat to rise and the large doors and windows would allow the breeze from the magnificent coast to cool down the home. There was a ladies parlor and a gentleman's parlor and the library of Jefferson Davis. I have done previous videos talking about Traveler and other famous war horses, but we found on the grounds in front of the home a marker for Traveler. This was President Jefferson Davis's dog and faithful companion. I want to encourage you to visit museums like this and explore more historical locations that hold such significant and similar importance. Seventy years old, still standing despite all the I also want to invite you to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel for more videos on historical information about this amazing nation. And of course, I include tons of videos 
on great places to tour and visit of geographic significance. 75% of the furniture in this home belonged to the Davis family. Beginning in 1903, Bavois was a Confederate veterans home. The home has been restored to how it was when President of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis, lived there. It is also a Biloxi landmark with a date of circa 1852. Hurricane Katrina played havoc on this property, leaving it closed for many years before it could be restored and opened to the public view. Some of the damage and restoration from Katrina. There are several other structures on the property that are also open to be toured. As far as the museum, one could spend a day or two just taking in all of the information from the amazing exhibits. And there is a rotating exhibit gallery. One of the highlights of the museum to me was this West Point Cadet uniform. It is very similar to the one that Jefferson Davis would have worn while he was in attendance at West Point. This was used in the funeral procession of Jefferson Davis on December 11, 1889 in New Orleans, reflecting both the late president's involvement in military affairs and his wife's desire for a military procession. It features examples of armament in its design, placed upon a Louisiana state militia caisson pulled by six black horses, carrying the remains of Davis in a copper lined casket, was provided with an eight man honor guard. An estimated 50,000 citizens viewed it as it led the three hour long procession from Lafayette Square to Metairie Cemetery. And we have been to Jefferson Davis's original burial site in Metairie. President of the Confederate States of America, Jefferson Davis died of acute bronchitis from malaria on December 6, 1889. He was buried in the tomb of the Army of Northern Virginia at the 150-acre Metairie Cemetery at the South's greatest funeral. Many cities and states petitioned for his remains, and in May of 1893, at his widow's request, his remains were reinterred at Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia, but only after the Louisville and Nashville Railroad car traveled to specific locales, including Beauvoir, his home in Mississippi. On May 31, 1893, over 75,000 people witnessed the procession into Hollywood Cemetery, where at 3 p.m. he was honored by a 21-gun salute before being reinterred. On October 17, 1978, a joint resolution passed by Congress and signed by President Jimmy Carter restored Jefferson Davis's citizenship, effective December 25, 1868. That is Confederate Memorial Day, and it is celebrated in Louisiana on June 3rd, Davis's birthday. When the surrender of General Robert E. Lee and General Joseph Johnston and the Confederacy in dire need of supplies and men, the certainty of defeat hung in the air at the Capitol in Richmond, Virginia. President Davis and Verena, his wife, had taken different paths to retreat from the Capitol, and though their paths converged, they parted once more until they met again near Irwinville, Georgia. On May 10th, 1865, federal troops found the travelers in a camp and captured President Davis. The war, which had begun in cheers and celebration, ended in defeat and despair. In four years, more than 700,000 soldiers died in a war that redefined the country. President Davis was arrested. His early days were painful and humiliating as he was kept in leg irons and held in a damp casement. Public outcry in the North led to him being placed in a more comfortable cell and he was allowed letters and gifts from his family. Eventually, Verena and their youngest child, Winnie, were allowed to stay at Fort Monroe in an apartment that would normally be assigned to an officer. On June 11, 1866, the U.S. House of Representatives voted that there should be a trial of the former Confederate president. Ultimately, there was no trial because it was felt that such an affair would impede the course of reunification for America. In May of 1867, Jefferson Davis was released from prison on $100,000 bail after two years. He had been stripped of his livelihood, his health, and finally his citizenship. He traveled to England, Europe, and Canada, and the U.S. At the urging of family and acquaintances, Jefferson decided that he wanted to write his memoirs, originally wanting to call it Our Cause. He wanted people to understand the reasons that the South had for secession, to have equal representation in Congress, to have the right to govern their people under the Articles of the Constitution, and to abolish excessive and unfair taxation of their crops. There's so much to learn, and I encourage you to go and visit this site in Biloxi. Mississippi. Tennis shoes on the ground. Unclassic road trip.